So I've been wanting to make a video about escaping Neekum since getting out of this hiatus on YouTube. It's been over a year since I've been employed in my job and I wanted to talk about a lot of the problems Neeks have to deal with. Right. I'd like to start off by saying that I've spoken to this with a couple of friends of mine who have been Neeks and they've sort of agreed with my points. They've said that they really wanted to hear me talk about these kinds of issues, some they can relate to more than others. And one thing I want to say is that being a need is really, really stigmatized. Like, motherfuckers assume shit about you when they find out that you're a need or when you give off that neat vibe that. No, I ain't got a job, motherfucker, vibe. One of these things is I have a lot of boomer family. Since becoming a need, I've sort of been separated from a lot of my millennial relatives. They've been doing their own shit, transitioning into the adult life their own way. Sometimes going through similar hurdles as me, but it's been the boomer family members of mine who've been interacting with me and they've all said the same thing they like giving you this speech that makes them feel good about themselves more so than it does reassure you and when they give out this speech you can tell they're kind of proud about themselves when they give it out like they accomplished something to you they have told you something that you needed to hear and that they were the person who was there for you when you were in the struggle. This is what they say. You've been out of school for X amount of time now. Either you go into university or you get a job. Because well, your mom's not going to be there for you forever. And they say this as if it's something that you don't want to accept. One thing I know specifically in my situation is I tell people all the time. Every day I'm sending out applications. I'm you know, remixing my resume. I'm doing all this shit. And people act like, you know, I ain't really doing shit. <laughs> I remember there was a time like the last couple of months before I finally moved on from Neat Them. I used to go to a place... And mind you, I look much more professional than I do now. I'm looking like... I eat vegan burritos right now. I would go in professional, looking real good, looking like a snack, sending in my resume. And without even looking at my resume, just hearing me say, Yo, I'm trying to get this job here, a part-time. Motherfuckers used to laugh at me. <laughs> yeah, I used to get laughed out the building. When I would uh, send resumes to people, I would have to go in when the manager isn't there to certain places to send it out just because motherfuckers would clown my shit. And of course, when I got the job, things were different. You got this air that people wanted to you know, adjudicate you to. A higher employment status. I say adjudicate, but that's like a court term. But in this case, send you to a higher employment status. That's why I feel like now that I have a job. People have said, you know, I'm also looking for someone who wants part-time work and whatever. But going back to the main subject, like, I would have, like, family members give me this speech as if all I'm doing is you know, being a bum. You know, really, for a while, I was kind of bumming hard because there was some time where I wasn't really... There wasn't any food in the fridge for me, so I was starving, surviving off grits and coconut butter and, you know, eggs and rice and all this unhappy stuff. That ramen package. That, that shit makes me sick. I don't know why I used to like that shit when I was a kid. It's gross. 
But yeah. I would have to subsist for a while and people were like, yo, the boomers in my family, they didn't get, they're like, yo, this guy doesn't, this guy doesn't want to work, he doesn't want to do, the year I've had, the year plus I've had work, it kind of just proves that, but there's also this, like, even among millennials who I talk to about the situation, it's like, some of them would have difficult situations of their own, you know, going into adulthood. Not necessarily neat problems, but, you know, problems I've noticed a lot with young adults too, like, some of the women I've spoken to, you know, they've had kids in high school, so they had to drop out. And maybe they've had complications with harder drugs. Nothing like, you know, fentanyl, anything these rappers take, but, you know, some coke here and there. I don't want to put anyone's business out there, but I remember I used to, like, talk to people going through these situations where early in adulthood, they had the kids, but they also had the drug problems, and they tell me, you know, the situation you're in, I'm glad I'm not in it. It's, it's something that if I was talking to someone much younger than me, I would try to get them out of it too. And this is what they tell me as they try to help me out of my situation. And I appreciate that. But that lets you know, with the way they would say it, being a neat is a bigger problem than, let's say, bringing life into the world that you're not ready to raise, necessarily. Or really being involved with drugs. But you have a job. And that stigma, like, because I say this about women a lot, like, a lot of women I know are young parents, they've had kids since we were in high school together, or, not in the same high school, no, but like, maybe we've, they were in this high school, I was in this high, that high school, they had the kid, whatever, but it's also men too. Like, some men who are also in their early 20s, maybe even the same year as me, and they're stuck paying child support for the rest of their young adult life. But then they're talking to me like, yo, you a motherfucking neat. You can't even talk to me about my problems, man. You're a motherfucking shut-in. And that's like, that's just the blow. But it's funny as fuck because... It, it's judgmental, but in a way that I feel doesn't insult my intelligence. Because they're looking at things from a genuinely different perspective than me. And the other thing. The other thing is that when you're a neat, people give you this hikikomori status. It's just unfair. Like, I remember everyone used to blow up my inbox on social media, on Skype, uh, ring my bell, do all this shit, because they know I don't got a job, and I don't go to school. So to them, that's grounds of, this guy has no life. And so oftentimes I would spend an entire day with someone, go to sleep, People add me to calls, not even messaging me like, oh, you got time for a call. Straight up adding me to calls as soon as they see, you know, a green check on my Skype. And doing this non-stop, even though they know they can hear my voice, I'm like, dying of tiredness. Sometimes I would not get sleep for three days. But you know what? That's really how it be. <laughs> uh... The message I'm trying to get across is that I had to deal with some bullshit in the three years that I was a neat. But in doing all of that, I really felt like I have a different mindset now than I did when I started out as a neat. When I started out as a neat, I had expectations that, you know, 
this getting a job shit is easy. And in truth, it is easy. But you kind of have to get some training. You have to really know your shit. You can't just swagger your way into a job. You really have to know what it is that you want to do. You really have to know people. And you really need to know good people. Like, I remember... Sometimes a motherfucker would try to sign me up to some multi-level marketing stuff. That's not good. Like, I'd rather be kneading it up than working in a job where I'm actively causing problems to my life and to life of innocent people. And that's one thing I started doing near the end of my knee thumb, like last year, which is like cutting off anybody who tries to sign me up for stuff like that. It's people who try to really take advantage of my problematic situation. And it's very egotistical because you hear not a lot of Facebook cutting people off of your life. But that's probably the biggest adult lesson you can ever get. When you're a kid, you, you don't really know how to cut people off of your life because you don't do that shit. If someone's causing you problems, you have to live with that. If someone's annoying you in school, you have to live with that. If someone is annoying you at home, you have to live with that. Like, I remember I used to always complain, like, yo, this person in my house is causing me problems, and, you know, my friends would always say, well, you gotta just endure. Adult life, it's not the same thing. You have to really pay attention to who you're around, and you have to get better at making friends. You gotta really watch who you be around, to say it in a hood way. And I really feel like now, if I were ever to go back into being a neat, I would get out of that much more cleanly, without any of the complications that I'm dealing with right now. Well, back then. Because I'm good right now, man. I got money in my pocket, and my life is treating me well. So this has been your boy, Mr. Wonka7, and suck my dick.